With respect to cryptocurrency, then cryptocurrency is a very doubtful type of trade. It's a very doubtful type of, I mean they call it currency because that's the name they've given it. But actually it doesn't behave like a currency. It behaves more like a non-entity that you buy and sell with other currencies. Meaning, I want crypto, how much is that, you know, how much is it worth, that Bitcoin for example. And they'll say, well one Bitcoin is worth, you know, $6,000. Okay, I'll buy two of them. So what you're doing in essence is that, you know, they've created this blockchain technology which actually gives you sole access to a particular type of Bitcoin or whatever title they use it, they call it generally the cryptocurrency, that gives you access to it and access to buy and sell it and to use it. It is normally set up by private individuals and then they market it as a currency that one day will be the currency that will be used by the people without borders. And people will now have access to your individual private financial information. So cryptocurrency, they want it to be the future so it doesn't have any boundaries, it doesn't have any restrictions, it doesn't have any government or any banks controlling it. And these are actual individuals that set up this thing and then they market it as a currency. But the currency is not actually a currency that is accepted, you know, in the mainstream financial markets, meaning that you can't go to the shop and say, right, I've got some cryptocurrency, sell me a loaf of bread. Or I want to buy a washing machine from Friends Appliances or from one of the other appliance companies in Pakistan or even in the UK. You can't use it. Why? Because it is not a, a, a norm. It is not a widespread form of currency that is accepted by the people. And there is inherent dangers in it also. So the biggest problem with cryptocurrency is that there's, that it's not actually a form of currency that is accepted and widespread amongst the masses and populations of humankind in any city or country of the world at this present moment. It is a very restrictive elite type of currency that is in the hands of a few. And they are selling it and almost treating it like a commodity on the stock market. It's almost treated like that. How much is your cryptocurrency worth today? Well, it's worth $10,000. What about that one? That's worth $8,000. What's that one? Okay, I'm going to wait for it to increase and then I'll sell it. So when it reaches 30000 40000 a Bitcoin, then I'll sell it. And then it crashes, as has happened you know, once or, two, or, or several times with these cryptocurrencies. So it's almost like a serial number, blockchain, which is basically you know, blockchain technology, which actually secures it. So it's, it's singular. It, it is not, it cannot be repeated, it cannot be copied, it cannot be stolen, and so on and so forth. Right, so you have this kind of like, you know, like, like a safety deposit box in cyberspace that is protected through blockchain technology. Then, when it comes to selling it, that's what you're selling. What is it? It's just a series of numbers on a computer, in essence. Right? Now the, the reverse argument is, well, that's what a pound note is. That's what a rupee is. All it is is a piece of paper with a, with a, with a bunch of numbers on there. But the difference is that this piece of paper, whether it be the dollar or the pound or the euro or the rupee or the rial or whatever, that this is something that is used in the whole of the marketplace. And it is accepted. And it is exchanged with confidence. And confidence is important because if there is no confidence in a currency, then the currency doesn't exist. When the confidence in a cur currency is, is lost, then the currency becomes useless. And that's why currencies become like nothing, like just tissue paper, like confetti. Right? So there is confidence in that currency. So when I go to our brother Zubair and I'll say, in my pocket, there is, you know, let's say 20,000 rupees. In your hand is a scarf. I will give you 20,000 rupees. The reason why he'll buy it, why, why he will sell it to me is because he has confidence in these 20,000 rupees. As do, as do 200 million other people in Pakistan. When you go to the petrol station, they will fill 60 liters of petrol, which is a physical commodity that makes your engine move. They will 
accept the rupee at whatever 10,000 rupees or whatever it costs to get 60 liters of petrol and they will take it because they have confidence in that rupee because it is used, it is accepted now the cryptocurrency at the moment I'm not saying that this is always going to be the case because it may reach that level but it hasn't, why? because it is private individuals who have created this and they're marketing it on the internet and they are spreading it amongst the people and they are saying this is the future, this is the future, this is the future. But at the moment it is not backed up by any authority. There is no authority that is backing it up. Right? And they say well it doesn't need to be backed up because it's in, you know, it's, it's out there, it's blockchain technology, it is permanent, it is, you know, you cannot, you cannot imitate it, you can't copy it and so on and so forth. But it is not widespread. Secondly, it is basically just a series of numbers that you've placed a value upon or that people who are buying and selling it between themselves that are placed a value upon. You cannot go to the marketplace and buy except one or two items that other people who accept and deal in cryptocurrency do between themselves. So let's say there's a, com- there's a community of let's say 100,000 or 200,000 or 300,000 or maybe even a few million people who are willing to deal in cryptocurrency. They'll, they'll sell their house to you if you give them cryptocurrency. Possible. And it, and it has happened. That still is not sufficient to make it a currency that is accepted amongst all of the people. So what's the best solution in this regard right now? Withhold from it. Why? Because it is a doubtful matter. It is not backed up with anything. You are just selling something that actually physically doesn't exist. And its value intrinsically is only what it is worth in euros, pounds, dollars, and what someone else is willing to pay for it, hoping as they do in markets, that this bubble will keep growing. And that's why crypto, the Bitcoin, you know, they collapsed. And people lost millions in it because they were treating it like it's going to keep growing, 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 growing. And then we're going to sell up. Then we'll get our dollars and then we'll go and buy a yacht. Because ultimately that's what it's going, that's what they want from it. Or people who use cryptocurrency to hide their wealth. Now that's a big issue in itself. Is it permissible to hide it or not hide it? And that is a discussion in itself. And that really is not the big thing for me. If a person wants to keep his wealth to one side as long as he's paying zakat upon it, then that's his choice. So I don't want to really enter into the politics and the in, you know, the, the rights and wrongs of people concealing their wealth in crypto. As for, as for the rest of the points that I've made, then that is enough for a person to say, Stay away from cryptocurrency Up until it is backed up With authority and institutions And the confidence of the masses of humanity In continents and nations And it is regulated So that if someone some zulm is done You can go to an authority Up until that is in place Cryptocurrency is just really Like one of those schemes where you're buying nothing and hoping that this nothing will grow and grow, and then you'll sell that nothing, which is, it's just a series of, you know, numbers. Barakallahu feekum.